Jokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast, where I pick a game, I play it for a week, and then I talk about it. This week's game is our Church and Halloween RPG, Story 1 through 4, and it was made for a challenge, uh, a game challenge, the Project Summer Ice.com challenge, I guess. And it was published by, by Breakthrough Gaming LLC, and that company basically just focus on publishing Christian games. Uh, but also there will be spoilers up ahead just so you know but first a little backstory I just looked at the thumbnail of this game and I didn't read the title of it the thumbnail looks like uh, one of those classic Game Boy Pocket games like monochrome black and white and I love that art style so I just downloaded it because it was this game is basically nothing not even a dollar so this game starts with the main character James explaining to the player that he's gotten a letter telling him to go to the mountain because there is this way to resurrect his dead parents and already it's kind of weird um but yeah this is the beginning of the story one uh, chapter or yeah your story so this takes place during halloween and um james goes into this forest and there's like a stone puzzle you need to touch a stone in a certain uh, certain way and you do that and uh, three other characters are, uh, arrive say sam Amy and Aaron, and they argue because, you know, uh, there's a, it's kind of a stupid idea to just go out on a loan with a mysterious letter to just follow that. So uh, Amy jumps down this hole that appears when the puzzle is solved, and uh, I think Amy is Sam's sister. So anyway, they go down to the hole and try to save her, and uh, she gets, Amy and Sam gets kidnapped by ghosts. Uh, because it's Halloween, I guess. And Aaron and um, James try to save them, basically. But uh, the ghost kind of takes them away, and uh, there's a cave in, and they have to leave. And then the ghost kidnaps Aaron because they know that he likes her for some reason. And uh, he decides that he, he will save Aaron be because he, he loves her and uh, she wants to marry her. So there's this whole kind of the, the whole kind of idea of pushing a religion like Christianity in your face, and I don't like that, but that's the way with these games, I guess. So that brings us to story two, the second chapter. Uh, James go looking for Aaron, and he finds Aaron, and there is some dialogue about James' dead parents, and some Bible verses, and Aaron is, of course, as James also lost her parents, and they're both orphans. And they found a strange spot where they dig, and they climb down this hole and goes down to try and find uh, Sam and Amy. But the ghosts uh, are kind of blocked them in and they, they have to run away from them. And they find a mysterious stranger uh, called Marie and they need to help her because she is sick. And uh, they take her to her house and then James and Aaron goes back to the cave to find some medicine. There's I think these some kind of mushrooms. And then the ghost stop and stop them, but uh, then James uses his slingshot. I think he had from the beginning, <laughs> and then the game kind of turns into a like a how do you say it like a battle turn kind of system instead of this walking simulator, I guess. But anyway, you defeat some ghosts, then you return to Marie and give her medicine, and you actually spend the night there. Uh, but James is because he loves Aaron, he goes out to find her some flowers and gives them to her and there's some Bible verses and the next day uh, decides to go with them because she's fully restored. So this brings us to the third story, chapter 3. Uh, Maria explains that she has also gotten a letter like James had about going to the top of the mountain so they kind of travel there together with Aaron and uh, Marie gives um, James some apples and they're basically like potions or health items so they, you, they go through uh, over a bridge and uh, Maria falls down so they have to go down into the forest and you have to beat some ghosts and you go through a pumpkin field but uh, there's some really weird graphics they kind of look more like mushrooms I don't know what they were thinking but it's kind of hard to translate pixel graphics when you're working with like a limited screen size and whatnot so well you beat a small boss you go to the top of the mountain, basically, to rescue Sam and Amy. But there's this weird guy called Scott. There, and he's kind of a 
in with the same church as as they are. They're like the same commune, and his father is the pastor, like the the priest or the preacher. And he has gone against his father because he doesn't believe in religion. And uh, there was some stupid thing about him actually not liking the whole idea of religion, and he just wanted to break away from it. But he is more or less a bad guy. He made the machine that made the ghosts. And I, I think the plot is ridiculous as it is, but he's a smart kid and he made a ghost machine. So anyway, Scott was also the person sending out these letters to to James and the others, and we don't really know why. So that brings us to story four, the fourth chapter. They are trapped in this prison, and Amy is the smallest one of them, so she can crawl out through the the grates or the guards. I don't know what they call them. And then you play, the, <clears throat> and then you play as Amy. You try to get a get a key. You go through like a. A labyrinth puzzle which like stairs that take you to different floors and you get the key and you basically open up the gate and then you go over go back over the bridge that you came from and into the forest and caves you confront Scott in front of his father Scott is kind of this asshole at this point so he kidnaps Aaron again because he realized that you know James likes her there's this whole debate between the father and the son also the pastor and Scott but Scott just wanted the money for himself. There was like this, he said that he was going to give it to charity or to some good cause, but it's just taking him from himself. So this is like a little twisted version. They they kind of paint the characters kind of black and white, and there are no gray characters. Either you're good or bad. <laughs> and the story is kind of weird as it is. So James decided that he wants to confront Scott by himself, which is a stupid idea. But he does this. So, he, so Scott is supposed to take a boat somewhere. You board the boat and you defeat a bunch of ghosts. So you get some more apples before you enter the the boat. And there is like this, this is not a puzzle, but every anchor uh, on the boat is guarded by a ghost. So you have to defeat a specific kind of ghost and uh, you can drop the anchor down. And then what happens is that the ship stops well, Aaron is also, he, you rescue Aaron, of course, on your way to the top of the bridge, we drop the anchors. And then everything, as you drop the anchors, the screen turns white. And you cut to a ceremony, ceremony, ceremony with the pastor talking about that they couldn't find James and Scott. And But Aaron was saved, so she was, she woke up in a hospital bed, basically. You cut back to, to Scott and James. And they're basically just in a, in this white kind of light, and uh, that's how the that's how it ends. Like to be continued, and I think there was supposed to be a fifth episode, but that hasn't come out yet. So, so gameplay. Uh, this 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 game is about trying to find your parents, reviving them, but then realize it was all a trick, and uh, basically confronting the person that basically sent you on a wild goose chase from the beginning. Control. The left stick or the D-pad move, moves James, the character. X interacts with stuff, and if you hold X, you can run. And circle is the optional layout button, which I think you remap just a couple of buttons. It's kind of stupid, but yeah. And from episode or story two and forward, tri the triangle button acts, acts as a save button, so you get a, like a code that you can input at the start screen. Graphics. It looks like uh, an old Game Boy pocket kind of game. It's monotone screen with simple graphics, black and white, and I think they have gray. But I like the style, and it's one of those things that 8-bit games, pixel pixelated games, look good in black and white. I used to have one of those old game, game of pockets, uh, or my sister had a red one, and I really like playing games on it. I think the screen was a little smaller than a normal brick Game Boy size, but you know, I like the, I like the graphics at least. So sound and music, it sounds like a Game Boy uh, game, <laughs> and I, I think that's kind of the charm also, it kind of brings back a bit of nostalgia about growing up with these kind of systems. So at the beginning of the episode you heard some music, and uh, I think I think the music is fine, it's a little bit, you know, ship tuny or whatever, it's simple, but I like it. So in conclusion, I wrote Nope. This is more of a... Uh, debate maybe I'm not very religious I grew up 
with religion. I was in a choir and stuff. So I'm 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 Christian at base, so to speak, but I I don't attend church at all. Well, like baptisms or weddings and funerals. That's it. I don't visit a church uh, uh, <laughs> in any other time frame, I guess. So the whole concept of religion is something that I don't like. And I, I don't want to be like offending people and stuff, but I believe that people should be allowed to believe whatever they want to believe. And I'm simply not Christian anymore. I I, I don't like the whole idea of taking something. Maybe it's like a, if I make a comparison, think of like a computer and religion. So a computer needs to be upgraded and updated like hardware or software wise to work with the, the current times. And it's the same thing with religion. The only problem is that religion doesn't update as much. You have the Old Testament and you have the New Testament, but it's basically a, I think it is like 2000 year long story or it was made 2000 years ago and it was translated and it's been reinterpreted, but it's basically the same concept. I don't think you can apply something that's been around for like 2000 years to a current kind of society. I understand like some people turn to religion because of comfort and the whole social thing and it makes them feel needed and it's it's a good thing, but I, I don't like it when someone tries to push it in my face and if it works for them, it's fine, but don't drag me into your stuff, okay? <laughs> So anyway, thanks for watching or listening and take care.